guys, John Rettinger with John4Lakers.com here with a browser speed comparison for you of the iPhone 3G and the T-Mobile G1. Both are running 3G networks. The iPhone here just has two bars of 3G and the G1 actually has four bars of 3G, but it should still be a relatively fair comparison. So I'm going to go ahead and load up John4Lakers.com here. We'll check network speed and rendering. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and get this started. We'll start them both at the same time. There's John Four Lakers. I'll release my finger. All right. And we are off. I think the G1's got a, well, iPhone caught up. G1's loaded the header, and the iPhone has loaded the context of the page. Looks to be neck and neck, actually. Still going. All right, the G1 is done, and now the iPhone is done. So just a little bit behind, not far. I did hit the G1 uh, just a second before the iPhone, so it was relatively close. So let's check default rendering here. The iPhone is a very familiar browser you've probably all seen. It renders it immediately in a web view format. So you can see all the text right here, and it looks just as it would on a computer, and your zoom is done by a double tap. To zoom in, double tap to zoom out, and you also have the pinch zoom and pinch zoom out, and you can pan around with your finger. So here on the G1, it actually loaded the page in a relatively zoomed format, but it did show it with just the text right here. So it actually zoomed in on just the text and left the images and such to the side, and scrolling is done the same way on the iPhone, nice and smooth no delay and it's a flick scrolling so it keeps going after you lift up your finger and the zoom is done with this plus and minus arrows here so you can zoom in zoom out when you tap the screen the arrows will show up and I can zoom out with those arrows the zooming is not as fluid as the iPhone but it is definitely usable and actually is very nice now the G1 has something cool that the iPhone doesn't have in the bottom right hand corner here you have these little arrows and if you click those arrows you get a little window. Oops, sorry, I'm looking at an angle here. I didn't quite click it. There we go. You get a little window right here. And you can move that. It's like a little magnifying glass. You can move it anywhere you want. Let's move it over those bars. And when you let go, it zooms in right on that area. It actually is very cool. And uh, it's not so much of a gimmick. I actually found myself using it. Um, so very impressive. Nice little feature that... Google has added there. Also one cool feature that is on the G1, let me go ahead and show you guys, it actually has windows similar to what's on Chrome. So you can have different windows open at the same time and you can go back and forth. The iPhone has a tabbed interface or actually a multiple window interface as well. Um, you can scroll back and forth through new windows. Hit new page, hit the window button, Oops. hit the window button and you can go back and forth kind of viewing one page at a time. Here you get a layout where you can view four at a time. Just uh, different ways to do the same thing. Six, half dozen of another. I'm actually very impressed with the browser on the G1. It actually is the most full-featured, user-friendly browser I've seen um, on any non-iPhone or non-Apple-made device. So certainly kudos to Google for putting out such a stellar browsing-centric device. I use the browser a lot, and I am able to use the G1 just as I would my iPhone, which is my primary daily driver. So certainly give them a big credit. Anyway guys, it's a real short video comparing browser speeds. I hope you enjoyed and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye bye. And if you want some exclusive content, be sure to follow me on Twitter www.twitter.com and for more news, reviews, and videos, all put out by you, the reader and viewer, be sure to check out www.john4lakers.com. Bye.